I'm going to talk about three things. Firstly, the climate outlook. Secondly, fine angel ratings. And thirdly, the continuous Haynes index. Let's talk about the seasonal climate outlook. Let's look at the 12 month rainfall decile map across Victoria to the end of July. Now remember, this doesn't include the healthy rainfall that we received during August. The past 12 months has seen above average rainfall across the majority of Victoria. And for a significant part of Western Victoria, the last 12 months rainfall has been the highest on record. These antecedent conditions have meant that deep soil moisture remains above average. As of mid-August, the Pacific Ocean was displaying neutral conditions, and it's highly likely that these neutral conditions will continue through to the end of the year. Although we can't make it a definitive statement about summer quite yet. The Pacific Ocean being in neutral conditions is likely to continue and this is suggested by the global climate models from around the world. However, we must be cognizant of the fact that one in two La Nina events is often followed by a subsequent La Nina event. So now let's look at the seasonal climate outlook for spring. This outlook is based upon the current state of the Indian and Pacific Oceans, which indicates that there is a marginally higher chance that conditions will be drier than normal during spring. Supporting this forecast, the Bureau's experimental dynamical climate model is also hinting at a drier spring in general terms across Victoria. So how are the public fire danger ratings issued for a district? Now remember, you've got to apply the appropriate fire danger index to the correct weather district. And remember that each weather district now aligns with the total fire band districts. For the Mallee, Wimmera and Northern Country, the Grassland Fire Danger Index is used. And for all remaining weather districts, the Forest Fire Danger Index is used. Last year, for the first time, a gridded approach was used to determine the fire danger index in each weather district. It's best explained in four easy steps. The first step is to split each district into hundreds of small grids. In fact, the grids are a three kilometre box. The second step is to calculate the forecast fire danger index in each grid every hour of the day. We then save the forecast maximum fire danger index value in each grid. And then the fourth step, the fire danger index for the district is determined by the 90th percentile, which can be thought of as 10% of all grid points must be higher than this value. This is often called the 10% rule. This approach is thought of being a fairly conservative way of determining the fire danger index for each district. And once we know the forecast maximum fire danger index for each district, we then apply the national scaled fire danger rating system to determine the rating for each weather district. Of course, at the top end, the code red is always determined by the state fire controller. This information is displayed in tabular format in the fire weather forecast summary. And this is issued each afternoon for the next day. Of course, we're still issuing the forecast fire danger index at the time of maximum temperature. And that's located in our fire weather forecast locations product available for the next four days. The Bureau of Meteorology is also planning to update the fire weather version of the Forecast Explorer. You may have seen the new and improved Forecast Explorer on the Bureau's public weather page. The fire weather version contains much more information specific for the users of fire weather information. You may find viewing 
this information in a graphical format much easier than in the tabular format that we also provide. Of course, the State Control Centre weather briefings will continue during the summer and also during the shoulder seasons to assist with planned burning activities. We introduced the Continuous Haynes Index last year to complement the forest and grassland fire danger indices. So what is the Continuous Haynes Index? While the fire danger indices are a measure of surface conditions, the Continuous Haynes Index is a measure of the upper atmosphere, in particular atmospheric instability and dryness. The Continuous Haynes Index values range from four being low to 13 being quite high. So what does the value really mean? Well, in Victoria, a continuous Haynes index of 10 or more is considered significant. A value of 10 or more indicates a quite unstable atmosphere and a quite dry atmosphere. Fires that develop in these types of conditions can become quite explosive. They develop a significant smoke column, often developing a cauliflower-like top, and we call that a pyrocumulus. The Tostery fire is a classic example of the fire behaviour that can occur when the continuous Haynes index is 10 or more. This fire generated a pyrocumulus on a day that the continuous Haynes was greater than 10. The fire danger index was also greater than 50 and a wind change added extra energy to the smoke column. This fire resulted in a significant increase in fire behaviour once the plume developed a cauliflower-like top. The combination of atmospheric instability and the wind change resulted in an increase in fire behaviour and the fire becoming very dangerous. So in summary, we're expecting a drier spring, but stay tuned and keep an eye on the Bureau's seasonal climate outlook for summer. Secondly, when we determine the fire danger ratings for a district, remember we use the 10% rule. And thirdly, on bad fire days, remember, be aware of the continuous Haynes Index.